Hello, welcome to Ask Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today I'm going to be talking about NF1 and scoliosis. I received an email from a mom whose uh, child is dealing with both of these diagnoses, and she was asking for some more information and also suggested that making a video might be helpful to the entire community, and I couldn't agree more. So let's start with defining what scoliosis is. So essentially, this term means that it's a curvature of the spine. Um, so generally we think of a spine as being straight, right, like this. And so in scoliosis, you'll see that the spine can curve in one direction or the other. <laughs> um, and it can curve in several places. It could be up at the top or up at the bottom. It could be at the top and at the bottom and make kind of an S shape. Um, there's a lot of variety in how this can happen. Now there is a lot of what we call um, idiopathic scoliosis, which means kids without any other kind of a diagnosis, um, without NF1, can have this curvature of the spine. A lot of people, so most people, your spine is not going to be ramrod straight. You're going to have a little bit of curving. It's mostly harmless um, and not something that needs to be addressed. However, we do see as children approach uh, puberty and adolescence that in some cases that we don't always fully understand, that curve will get worse. And so as the child gets taller, that curve will continue to to get worse and, and we measure it in degrees. And so it can be, you know, a 20 degree curve, a 45 degree curve. And so uh, we watch that as they grow. Um, so in idiopathic scoliosis, which is just a big word saying um, the spine is curving and we don't really know why, um, that, that can happen. Now in NF1, um, we know that kids are at a little higher risk for scoliosis um, and there are two types. So um, typical scoliosis in NF1 is, it looks a lot like kids that don't have NF1. It um, Really those curves will start to get worse as they are hitting puberty. Um, we'll keep an eye on them. Uh, there might be bracing. You know, the kids, they can wear a brace on the outside to try to correct that. Um, they'll see an orthopedic surgeon to watch the curve and to address whether or not any kind of surgical intervention needs to happen. Um, now in NF1, we see what's called uh, dystrophic scoliosis. Now, um, dystrophic scoliosis is a form of scoliosis that can happen um, and it, it's bony changes, so in the spine, that are related to neurofibromas that are impacting the way the spine is growing. So this can be identified by looking for um, really specific features on an x-ray. Um, but essentially dystrophic scoliosis is considered to be uh, a more serious form of scoliosis in kids with NF1 um, and it, it can come along with different things. You might see uh, thinning of the rib bones or weakening um, of the, the actual vertebral bones, which are those little, little bones that are stacked on top of each other to make up your spine. Those can become weakened um, and it can just cause a really severe curvature, um, more significant than what we see in non-dystrophic scoliosis where there's a curving that's not related to any kind of a tumor or neurofibroma. Um, so essentially what we what we often see is that children with NF1 um, you'd think um, that it would be really simple to tell whether their scoliosis was being caused by a tumor or not but can actually be um, challenging to diagnose and challenging to know um, in the beginning when it first happens kind of why and what it looks like. So the best thing to do is to be followed by an NF expert, which is what obviously I say a lot. You're getting used to that. Um, but we do the bend over test, which is something that um, they they do it in most public schools. Now, actually, they'll start with like a some basic training for um, the teachers. Kids bend over, touch their toes. We look at their spine, right? You can see from the outside if there's something going on. Um, so th that will start as they are approaching puberty. The pediatrician should be doing that on a regular basis. If there's something amiss, we can do an x-ray. If we start to see there's curvature happening, we need a referral to an orthopedist now, or orthopedic surgeon. You want to see an orthopedic surgeon, if at all possible, who's familiar with how um, a diagnosis of NF1 specifically can impact a diagnosis of scoliosis. Um, and so that's important to think about as you're getting that referral from your pediatrician. And of course, as always, if you need help with that, if you think that if your pediatrician has said, yeah, your, your kiddo with NF1 definitely has some curving happening here, we'll keep an eye on it, or we need to refer them somewhere and you need some assistance, contact me. I'm always happy to help. Even if there's not an NF clinic network clinic near you, 
Um, sometimes I can use the resources I have to find um, surgeons in your area who have at least been treating other um, children with NF1 and scoliosis. So hopefully, I know this has been a pretty basic video. Hopefully it's helpful and inspires some more questions. That's my goal with these is that maybe I, I give some basic information, kind of get everybody started thinking about you know what's going on or how your child is being impacted. And then we can talk down in the comments section. We've had some interesting conversations. I love getting your emails. So please never hesitate to, to get involved and to contact me and we'll keep making these videos. Have a great day, everybody.